Hello! You are live! We're alive! It's alive! Oh, let's see if we might drift in here. Well, I get this adjusted. So, I saw the sign. Plugging up my phone, I saw the sign. So, uh, I posted a video this morning, and the video was on the basics of prepping, and the very starting point. If you're going to be a prepper, this is where you start at. So, the video kind of had some mixed reviews. I had some people that posted a, um, a few different comments on it. And I, I, I respect all the comments that were on it. Um, a couple of the comments I'm trying to, was trying to decipher a little bit. Um, they did kind of clarify in the, the next few comments. But um, if you post a comment, just read it to yourself very slowly and make sure that you were able to portray the, uh, the thought that you were trying to portray. But, um, yeah, so I'm here for any questions that someone may have while we wait. Anyone? Oh, we're going to get anybody tonight. We'll see. I'm just going to sharpen this. In case you're watching the replay and you're really bored watching this. This is the SOG fix fixation. I think it says, yep, SOG fixation right there. That is the name of this knife here. But this knife is a pretty decent little knife. Um, it's not the strongest in the world so if you're i got this knife because it looks cool <laughs> i'm gonna be completely honest with you the reviews on it are hit and miss um you can do light tasks with it but when it comes down to batoning uh, a lot of people had catastrophic failures with their blade when they baton with it so i'm just going to say if you baton with this knife you probably do so at your own risk so hey we got someone in there hello so i'm just sharpening this blade right here but uh i'm just doing this for anybody that might have a question about my video i posted earlier this morning because um it did get a lot of comments and i just was wanting to Make sure I could possibly answer all them questions and uh, see if I can help out with anything. Hang on, I'm pulling my, pulling my iPad up here now so I can uh, possibly look at any chat that might be going on. What's up, FLP? How you doing, sir? I didn't realize that was you. I, I couldn't see the chat, so uh, sorry for the delay. Um, no, I posted a video this morning on Prepping 101. And I covered the five C's of prepping, and I covered the rules of three with, of prepping. I'm glad you're doing good. I'm doing well myself. I was just going to see if I can have a little conversation with anybody that might have a question about the five C's and or the uh, the, the rules of three. Um, while I'm doing that, I'm just sharpening my little SOG knife. So... In case you were wondering about what I was doing here, what knife I had, is the SOG fixation. But, um, it, it's, let me tell you, this knife is a great feeling blade. A, the, it's kind of got the, the rubber, the rubber over mold there, I guess is what you would call that. But it feels, it's, it's almost slim, but it's kind of to the point where if it's the right, 
slimness, the right thickness that I have, you know, uh, a lot, when, when I buy a glove, I buy a large glove. So I don't have an overly big hand, but I have an average large size hand. But, you know, somebody with a smaller hand, somebody that's, you know, five five with a, a hand that matches would still be able to get a good grip on this blade. But the videos I've seen is this thing does suffer catastrophic failures when people baton with it. Baton? Baton? Yeah, even with it. And, um... So I have not done any batoning with it. This is not my knife for that. I got it because I just love the way it looks. And with the uh, the fake edge on the back side there, it, if I ever had to use this for any kind of stabbing motion, I do believe it would work. But um, I try to keep it good and sharp for, um, for cleaning purposes. Cleaning purposes. Man, it's kind of odd to be on this side of the conversation and you in there because I'm always coming to your live streams when I can. I work weird hours so I don't get a chance to get into a lot of them. That's why I live stream late at night and when y'all are doing the live streams about eight o'clock I'm at work. I have the, I have that Becker BK7. I have that Becker BK7. What are you talking about, the Becker BK-7? I'm not familiar with that one. It's beat up, oh no worries. But yeah, I try to get in when I can. I love the live streams. I love the fact that we have this nice little community. And I have found this out. Here's a little tip. Okay, so, long time ago, not a long time ago, but uh, a few months back, what I did is I took these cotton rounds from Dollar General, and I made some kind of dehydrated body wash that you can keep in your bug out bag that you can you know bathe yourself with but i had all these leftover cotton rounds cotton pads whatever you call it and it works amazing put you just a little dab of oil on it and you can clean and polish a blade up very nice and the pad soaks up all the residue of the oil and that way you don't have any old residue left on your blade, but it protects it and leaves a nice sheen on it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But, um, so that's my, one of my little tricks I've picked up over the course of time here trying to, to do it. So yeah, keep you some cotton pads and just any kind of gun oil. And I did try, I tried it with the on and oil and it didn't seem to go as well. But what I found best is the rim oil just really seems um, like if you're batoning like a, like a pine or fat lighter and you get all that sap and stuff built up on there, it, it cuts right through that sap very well. And uh, just one of my little tricks, it, it, it takes off the, the scuff marks from the bark. There's any kind of sap on there, but yes, I'm very, very happy with it. Or two watt, I think I'm the second person watching. But, um, so I'm actually, I'm trying to figure out like how to, if I ever get anybody willing to do it, I always try to figure out like how to start panels. So I have to go Tiki Torchville. Yeah. I, I, I don't know about that, but I bet it would work. Yeah. And it's probably a little cheaper than using my real mold, isn't it? But, um. I have actually was kind of wondering too, like, what if you use like an olive oil or a canola oil? That way, if you did do any skinning with it, you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, ingesting gun oil. You would be possibly, the worst case scenario, ingesting, uh, uh, yeah, what was I going to say? In, ingesting, you know, a little olive oil. So, something else I learned is... I think it has to be. Okay, so it's the petroleum that's actually doing the work. That makes sense. Is if you take the edge of your blade and have a little piece of wood like that and rub it across, any burrs that might have gathered up from sharpening will be gone. Um, a piece of paper. <laughs> Real well, yeah. Yeah. 
we'll have a little real old chugging competition and we'll see who gets the uh, hairiest chest out of that deal. Let's see. Did I do it? <laughs> I tore it. Well, I tore it and sliced it a little bit. Woo! That one's sliced. I think we might have a winner, winner chicken dinner. But, oh, that one tore. Ooh, you see how sweet that was? Let's try it one more time. Because I'm out of corners here. Nice. Ah, right. do I have any arm hair left? Oh, that's a lot of arm hair. Oh, can you see that? I don't know if you can even see that. Yes. So, I do a little gunsmithing from time to time, and I very much enjoy gunsmithing, but I've really been working on my knife sharpening skills because if I can take, if I can take a free knife or a lost, uh, a found knife or a cheap knife and, and put a little bit of an edge on it, the, the edge retention is the thing I can't change obviously but um just for example so a buddy of mine he brought me this the uh, crkt knife i can't remember which model it was but it, it kind of looked like a little mini samurai sword coming a little kydex sheath that had the uh the the samurai wrap on it but i kid you not it looked like somebody took a grinder an angle grinder to this blade and he said he found it or no his brother found it at a pawn shop for like ten dollars i think and he said he said it won't cut it's all banged up what do i do what do i do i said bring it to me i brought he brought it to me i ground that thing down and i made i put a straight edge on it just as nice and pretty as it could be and so he has this ten dollar knife i think that crkt knife i looked it up it was like four or five dollars or forty five dollars anyways so i uh I'm very, very pleased with that result. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got someone else coming join us. I see someone else watching now. But, uh, yeah, if if you can find a knife that's a good quality blade that's been beat up and so much, because I kid you not, there's a guy, I was talking with him, he has Benchmades. All he buys is Benchmade knives. But he said to me, as soon as it uh, loses its edge, he puts it down and buys another one. And so I've asked, I'm begging him, I said, send me them bench maids. Please send me them bench maids because I can put an edge on a bench maid now. I love my little bench maid here. Oh, this one might need a little, oh, it's still shaving. This one needs a little, little bit of loving. But, uh, so yeah. If I can get me a, a free bench maid, I will take a free bench maid. Um,. What do we want to talk about, FLP? Got anything to talk about? I like to interact with the side chat best as possible. I was about to hop off and see if anybody else is doing a live stream. I'm, I like to get a little round table up. I really don't know about that. Yes. Well, okay. So I had the, uh, I had the little, uh, the Lansky, the, um, okay. I told, I used to have a little Lansky thing that you, you do this number right here. And I see people have really good success with it. I don't, I cannot get that one to work. That's supposed to be like the foolproof method to, to blah, 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 on and on work again. This one right here, this is the uh, work sharp little field sharpener. And I tell you, I have the best look with this one right here, that, and this little strop. I got this strop off of Amazon. I don't, they don't even know about a name brand. But um, anyways, I really like that strop. But uh, I was hoping to get anybody on here that might have any um, first time prepper questions. Because that's kind of, I've been prepping since I was like around 20. Um, I really didn't know I was a prepper. Yes, I want to get one of the water stones. I'll, 
what I'd like to get is um, I keep hearing Edge Pro Plus, I think is the name of the, the stone, but it's like a 20,000 grit stone. I mean, this thing right here that I'm on is, is pretty fine. It's, I say it's probably in the 1500 grit rate, but um, 20,000 grit stone is just amazing. Edge Pro Plus, I do believe. But, um, Waterstone, what was he saying? Okay, so I've been prepping since I was like 20. Um, I never really called myself a prepper. I just always said I was ready for a storm. You know, if, if, if something happened, I was ready for a storm. If, if a limb come, knock the window out, I knew where all my, my tarps was to, to, to kind of get the window sealed up so water couldn't come in and things like that. And, um, I, I think, I can't remember what knife it was, but I actually, I, I remember buying a knife and when I got on here and did some, uh, you know, just kind of searched the knife, I found somebody did a review and it was somebody talking about bushcrafting with a knife and I can't remember who it was and that kind of got me into the bushcraft side of things. Bushcrafting side of things kind of led me to more of the survivalist prepper idea. Um, I mainly prep for long-term power outages and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's just neat kind of how I grew. And so I guess always my my biggest thing that I like to, to, to tell new preppers is, first of all, back up and look at yourself. Look at where you live and your environment and what is the most likely thing to happen in your area that you can't control. So. Side note, because I have ADD and I do this sometimes, and since I'm talking by myself, I can interrupt myself. So the um, one of the officials in Hawaii was uh, doing an interview, and the reporter said, do, do the authorities have any plans of stopping it, talking about the lava? The lava is, you know, is moving through all these nice neighborhoods and everything else, saying they're, they're talking about this island could get a complete facelift thing, just all lava going through it. This lava is molten rock coming out of the core of the earth. And they are actually asking, do the authorities have anything they can do to fix this or any plan to stop this? And I'm sitting there going, people are so dependent on the government, the authorities, somebody else to fix what's wrong that they don't have a plan to, to help it themselves. And that just, it just really blew my mind that that's, the dependency level you heard that too yeah it is insane that's the dependency level of people nowadays is hi desert right here it's it is one of the dumbest questions i've ever heard in my entire life a, a year I, i'm saying you know it's only 2018 but it could have this millennia wrapped up but um and and that's kind of what i lead to people is you know uh you, if you go, if you type in the name of your state into the Apple uh, App Store, most of your states will have a preparedness app, and it's telling you to gather fa flashlights, food, water filters, uh, batteries, uh, all in a bag, ponchos, things like that. A so the state itself, the the uh, the authorities that they're even asking is um is recommending you be somewhat ready and prepared. Yeah, exactly. You People just think that, hey, I'm just gonna call 911 and be like, hey, uh, I got this happening and everybody's starving to death and guess what, 911 may or may not respond. You know, there's situations and that's why looters hang out because when it's a, the declared a state of emergency and it's a mandatory evacuation, they don't actually go door to door and handcuff people, throw them in the back of a van saying, hey, it's mandatory evacuation. They just tell everybody, hey, civilization here is going to halt for a little bit. 911 will not work. You know, you cannot call and get help. You cannot call and get rescued. And you got to look at where you live, what kind of disasters happen. If you live in a tornado zone, tornadoes can kind of pop up with kind of no warning. So your preps 
need to be based in an area of the house, uh, in your, your shed, wherever it might be, where you'll probably run. So if all of a sudden you see a tornado or a warning goes out, you run to that area knowing that my water's there, my food's there, my batteries are there, my flashlight's there, my medical kit's there. That's where you run and that's where you keep everything. Where I live, I live in a hurricane zone. There's hurricanes that just kind of come through and cut through my area uh, pretty frequently and it's getting to be that season where we always kind of live, where I live, we always have them coming to the left and to the right of us. Um, we've had one come very close to being right on top of us, but they always kind of veer because of the lay of the land. They always veer right when they get to us. Um, and so we've had areas that I, around where I live, they went without power for, for three weeks. Um, we've got five inches of rain in my house. And next thing you know, you know, we got bridges getting shut down because of the erosion damage because our, our roadway system is so poor. So what do I have? I have an abundance of water outside. So I have a, a way to filter that water. I have um, uh, 55 gallon food grade containers full of uh, clean water. And I am building my pantry of freeze dried food. And I try to keep um, a good supply of canned chicken, spam, and canned vegetables, mostly green vegetables in the house. A lot of people ask me why mostly green vegetables. Um, green vegetables just seem to, they just seem to taste better to me and stay fresher a little longer. So I always try to lean towards getting the green vegetables. Um, and then uh, acidic, veg uh, acidic canned goods, I try to stay away from them, like tomatoes and stuff, because you always get that, that weird taste. And that's actually the acid um, deteriorating the inside of the can. So I try to stay away from acidic cans. And um, what's going on just in time, prepping? Hey, Dad out. <laughs> hey, I love that. I get that at least once a live stream. Yes. Dash out is not in autocorrect. I'm not big enough yet, but maybe one day uh, Apple and Android will put me as, you know, and when you type in that out, we'll, uh, it will spell check you to dash out. So maybe one day. But, um, so yes, I prep. So that's what I try to tell first time preppers. There we go. I'm back on my original train of thought here. I, I left this train about 10 minutes ago. We're back now. So I try to tell first time preppers is let's start off with the most likely occurrence because a full economic third world country overnight breakdown, I am doing well right now there, Will, um, is possible, but not probable. So let's, we got, we got to balance the possible and the probable. What is reality? Um, what is the more likely of realities? So if you live in a tornado zone, plan for a tornado. If you live in a hurricane zone, plan for a hurricane. If you live in a, frigid cold area where you know uh, a, a frozen uh, limb could cut, break down then do that there you know my freeze dry I haven't tried freeze dried fruit now what brand of freeze dried fruit do you do you get because the only freeze dried fruit I've really eaten is what comes in like um like trail mixes you know where it's like freeze dried papaya and bananas and uh, and pineapple and stuff like that, and that's that's fair. It just gets really sweet. I don't know if they just covering it with sugar or if the fruit just gets that sweet. I've been looking at getting into the the, uh, the Thrive Life. Am I saying that right? Thrive Life, but I don't really know. Um, mostly, most of the freeze dried stuff I get is when I go grocery shopping at Walmart. I pick up a bag of Mountain House and uh stuff like that but um i do i've been wanting to get into uh, canning my own vegetables but first of all i gotta grow some vegetables and me and the garden don't go well together i've tried gardening they don't work but um anyways uh so my my basic first step is uh i got a bunch of all right uh, let's find 
Cards. Okay, I will try my best to redefine Anguson. Anguson Farms. So, uh, I'll try my best to find that out. But, um, so, if you prep for the situations you know and kind of the smaller versions of the situations you survive, then that's just a good starting point. Kind of like what I've done is I've had a good way of taking care of hurricane trouble. Um, I've tried to have a good way of taking care of hurricane trouble. So then that grew to, well, what other issues would I have? So when I built my first aid kit, I started gauging like what first aid items would I need? What would be the more likely situations I would run into? So I was looking at um, limbs falling on you. The fact that it could be a while before an ambulance could make it down the dirt road or even before I could get you know, myself to a hospital because of the washout dirt roads. Um, limbs, snake bites, insect bites, um, things like that. Um, so I got me a little snake, snake bite kit. I got me tourniquets, uh, blood clotters. Um, I need to get me a good stint for in case you get a broken limb or something, something I can kind of keep it stabilized. I uh, did have a sling and the sling has went missing. Uh, well, I'll keep my eye out for that. Is it in the uh, is it in the normal normal grocery side? Because the only freeze dried food I ever see is like is it is in these little plastic containers, and I would like freeze dried and sealed, like you know the meals here. So okay, I just will the freeze dried check out Overstock.com. Huh, I did not know they would have that. That, uh, that is a helpful little tip there, good sir. Appreciate that. Okay, I, I must be completely overlooking the freeze-dried food that's got a zip top. Okay, so, yes. Looks like I'm about to spend some money because I've been looking for, uh, some different freeze-dried food. I've really been trying to... See, this stuff right here that I got... It just, I just dropped. Okay, land in my box. Is uh, it's good till the twenty, uh, till the twenty fourth, till twenty twenty four. So I'm actually thinking about cooking it. One, I got a little video about that and how I uh, came to have it. Look it up for me, sir. Now you know what. While we're here, I know y'all too, and I trust y'all too. Just in case one day this thing ever gets popping and I need some help. I just gave y'all a... Okay, I've been to Emergency Essentials. Um, I really like their website. I like how it's laid out. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I ordered something off of there. What did I order off of Emergency Essentials? I might have got some first aid stuff on there. Do they, they do first aid? I do first aid, and I think I looked at, um, I think I looked at, I'm taking my socks off because there's one thing y'all need to know about me, it's kind of a weird thing, is I hate wearing just socks. If I'm going to have socks on, I'm going to have shoes on. If I don't have shoes on, I want my socks off. I know it's weird, but that's just how I am. If I just, I can't have just socks on. <laughs> okay, so I have been to Emergency Essentials. Um, there was another website I just found. Good, great. It, it gets hard. And see, I'm, I'm doing this on my phone, so I can't just go through my, my browser history on my phone to, uh, to see what website I was at. But I've been, that's one thing I do is I'll just kind of, I'll go on Google and I'll search survival food, survival first aid, survival knives, survival ferro rod, you know, just stuff like that. And, I'll go through the website, and if I like it, I'll add a, uh, my Patriot Supply is an, affi is an affiliate I'm a member of. My Patriot Supply, okay, I don't know that one. I've never done, seen that one. But I tried to add all these to a bookmark, 
always be prepared, right? Uh, my Patriot Patriot Supply. <laughs> if you spend the big bucks, well, my bucks are little tiny. I gotta do this thing piece by piece. I did see the big old ferret rod you got, Will. That was awesome. Uh, so, emergency essentials. I already know about that one. I'll write it down. Uh, Patriot Supply. I want to put a little note. Use FLP link. See that FLP? That's how I do things. Use FLP link. So that reminds me when I go to my Patriot Supply, I will come on YouTube, find your link, and use it. Utilize. And what was the other one? Overstock. I already got overstock. And I try anytime. I'm not big enough to do it yet. And I, I, I've mentioned this a few times. I'm not really... I can I can afford the things I want to an extent. Um, I'm not rich by no means. Uh, I'm I, I'm comfortable, so I do this because this is kind of this is a hobby for me. So I never I I'll actually if I find something I actually try to find somebody that has a. Uh, I try to find a um, a YouTuber that has a Amazon page and has that item on their Amazon page and try to link that so I can help them out. So I always try to help out people I can help out when I can help out, but um, I haven't taken the time to try to set up an Amazon store and I don't know about all this stuff here, but I just, I'm just doing this for the fun. So I had 153 subscribers earlier today. Now I'm down to 151. How'd that happen? FLP, a good guy, dash out. I know, I really like FLP. Um, I do, I, I watch some of his live streams when I can on Friday nights. He, he always has interesting topics. So, your topic the other day about the, um, the, the child predators pretty much when it goes down, uh, that really hit home with me because we, uh, we had that happen in our area to some people I know. And, um, I tell you, child predators, they, they can look as normal as anybody else can out there and they can blend right in and they can worm their way out of a situation. I, I kid you not. I don't know how they got away with it, but they, they got away scot-free. And hey, that's all I can really say about it. So, yes, you told me that you use the uh, the fat lighter at the uh, at the beach. Yeah, it's okay. It's it didn't happen to me, but it happened to some really close people of mine, and it was uh, it I I had to get out. I mean, it was just one thing brought way too much memories. So yeah. Um, creative redundancy. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing, sir? How are you? Um, so, Will, back to the, who's going to call it? The fat lighter. I'm glad it worked for you. Um, I really, I, I saw that the camera got knocked over. I was really hoping to see it. Yeah, I'm glad they got their guy and he's going away. But, um. I actually, so I'm trying to, uh, creative redundancy. Do you have any questions for anybody today? Lots of bug and fireman. Yes. So, uh, bug, bug spray, mosquito coals, and mosquito netting is, uh, is definitely in my bug out bag at any given time. I have I have mosquito spray 
that I keep in my bug out bag and then I have another spray that I keep outside of my bug out bag because if I ever have to go, that is one thing I cannot go without. Yo, uh, one of the Survivor Man shows, one of the Survivor Man shows that they do, uh, the one where they drop him off in the middle of somewhere and he has to survive for a week or eight days, whatever it was, he had to get picked up from the Altamaha River. The Altamaha River is like right over there for me. You know what I mean? It is like, I ain't, I'm right beside the Altamaha River. He had to get picked up because he could not survive because he could not get the mosquitoes off of him. Um, if if I can remember the quote he said, one of the quotes he said is, this is the only place on this planet I've ever been where you can't start a fire to get rid of the bugs. When you start a fire, more bugs show up. And that is how it is. Unless it is a smoky fire to the point you can barely breathe, breathe, the bugs just keep circling around you. I tell you, it is a nightmare down here. I've always said if something ever happens, I've got to head north because about two summers of these bugs would be about all I have um, the capabilities of handling. But now I do know a few natural bug repellents in my area. Um, I have no idea what the bush is called, but I know what the bush looks like. And you take the leaves, you crush them up as fine as you can, um, kind of get you a little mat going down, you keep crushing them up, keep crushing them up. And if you have an old pot and you can hold them over and kind of kind of cook them down to where you kind of get the resin off of it, you can use that resin and just rub all over you and that gets the bugs out. But if you don't have a way to cook it down, you can actually crush it up, put the, the stuff in your hat, rub it all over you, take, keep it in your pocket. Yep. It might, it might be eucalyptus. I don't know. I've always said it was something like a, I think a myrtle maybe, like a crepe myrtle is what it's been called. But yeah, I've heard of eucalyptus does it too. I don't know if we have eucalyptus in this area. I'm sure we do. Hello, Nighthawk 25 you. How are you doing this evening? I'm glad you could come join us. Getting us a little little build up here. A little few people talking. Any questions for anybody? We're all here to uh, talk about anything and everything we could talk about. Oh, and Will, you got to actually see this live stream live because the last one you uh, sent me a message that you didn't get to see it all. I'm sorry that you missed it. I want to try to start throwing in more and more live streams. I don't know if I want to do uh, morning, midday, or evening. So, um, I'm just trying to, to gauge. Good to see you live. What, what? We live up in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's starting to get late for me and I'm starting to get a little delirious. But, uh, yes, I, I know I want to try to do some more live stuff. Um, I, I don't know. I just kind of came on here with a, um, with a, the kind of the the this this the quick goal is to or the the quick topic is to we can always revert back to um, various times. Yes, yeah, that's uh that's kind of my thinking. Creative redundancy is um is yes, it has been not here also. Yeah, um, uh, well, FLP, thank you very much for stopping by. It's been a pleasure. Been real. Um, you have a good night, but, uh, I will call you CR. Everyone say goodbye to FLP. Bye. Finger, legs, prepper. Adios. Hasta luego. Um, so if, when I go live, what I want to try to do is I'm actually going to try to have like a base topic. And so right now the base topic is prepping 101 taking it down to basics. So if anybody comes in and joins and they have a question, I want to try to stop what I'm talking about if I'm rambling, which I do, and move it directly into the question that has been presented. Um, unless I'm in the middle of discussing and reading comments that, um, that the side chat here at ask, acts. So, but my other goal is to figure out how to do the panels. And, um, you know, if I can, if I plan on talking about a topic and that topic has been in someone else's videos or I've heard them talk about it, things like that, 
then I will hopefully try to get some, you know, some panel members up here. And I want to guide, when we do the panels, I want to have the panels very well organized to everybody knows kind of, um, I, I got Google Hangouts and I don't know if I'm just really slow or what it is. I can't figure it out. <laughs> I can't figure out how to make a call and then put the call on YouTube. That's where I struggle. I don't know. I, I, I haven't messed with it a lot. I really haven't. I haven't watched any videos on it. I haven't really got into it too much. Uh, it will come in time. Yes, it is easy peasy lemon squeezy. Hello, high desert pioneer. But um, anyway, so I am going to uh, I might do that. Will we might get together one day and uh, and figure it out and try to get a little panel going here and there. But um, anyways, the 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 idea though is when I get the panel going is I want to kind of have like a a pre-talk with somebody when um. I might see our, I want to have a pre-talk. So when we, we start in, we aren't talking over each other. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm just going to do it one time and be like, Oh, that's all it was. Well, that was easy. <laughs> but that's how a lot of stuff goes with me in life. It just, I just struggle, struggle, struggle. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, that's how it was. Okay. Um, I'll do that quite often. I did that the first time I boiled water, actually. I had no idea how to boil water, and someone said, you just put water in a pot, and turn the knob, and it boils, and I'm like, wow. I didn't even burn it or nothing. I boiled water perfectly. <laughs> ah, that's right, a light bulb moment. You have that. I have them many times. I'm gonna run low on juke twine. I never in my life thought that, uh, I'd be like, I gotta really check on my juke time supply. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I, I've always kind of been ready, but I've never really been like super ready, I guess you'll say. And and now I'm just, it's amazing all the things that I'm just getting on to. Firestar, you are right. You are absolutely right, good sir. Um, I made a video today and I referenced that. So, oh, 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 so. Will, since I have you on here and I have you live, the Camellius Carnivore. This, I've had a couple of different Camellius products and uh, Camellius blades. Like, oh my goodness, I got a mess. Well, there it is. There it is right here. So, the Camellius uh, little multi knife tool here, I have that. But, um, so, it looks awesome, does it not? Now, however, I always have a mess, I do. Because this is, this is kind of my catch-all table. Woo, I'm ready to have a machine Let's put this down. So, this is kind of like my catch-all table. Um. I gunsmith on here, I sharpen knives on here, I do reviews on here, I organize my bug out bags on here. I, this is my study table. This is when I want to sit down and read and take notes. This is where I come to sit down and read, take notes, whether it be bushcraft, it be the Bible, it be anything. Um, I do literally everything on this table and I think it shows. <laughs> I'm not sure, but, uh, under here is a gun mat, <laughs> but um, anyways, so the Camellius Carnivore, this blade would be perfect. Yeah, this is my creative cave. Um, this blade would be perfect if they did not do that hollow grind on there. Um, if they just would have done a flat grind or they just, just about anything else than what they did because um. Yes, it is a very good book. Uh, if you do not have it, I'd strongly suggest getting it. But it gives you a good, good foundation of skills. But that's the only thing they would have to change. They would have, if, if, if they would have done a different grind on this, because this grind cannot handle a 
very, very strong direct chop. I've cleaned the blade up. It took me a little bit to clean the blade up. I'm very, um, I'm very particular about my edges and I try my best to do a good job sharpening. I don't know if you can tell that, but there, I've worked and worked and worked on this blade. It's right here. You can't see it. You can't see it. I tried, but, um, anyways, it, uh, it rolled on me. And like I said, if it had a different edge on it, the saw works very good. And they actually, they made the handle. You have a little bit of a point, a little bit of pressure right here, but you can actually use the saw comfortably while still having, you know, your good grip for your chopping. The what now the one thing I did to this is the handle was very slick. So I went and got a can of flex seal, taped around it, and I flex sealed the handle and that gave me a nice rubbery grip so it wouldn't go flying out of my hand. And it does have a, a little lanyard hole there. And with how tough and aggressive that base is, I'm sure if you lived in a rocky area, you could really get some uh, rock chips going. I don't live in a rocky area, so I cannot test that theory. Um, it claims it's a ch chisel and everything else as well. Uh, if you need a sheath, I'll be glad to help you out. Um, yes, glass breaker would work as a glass breaker as well. Well, I don't know if it's sharp enough, to be honest with you. I, cause I've never had to break glass before, but everything I've ever read, the point of a glass breaker is to be as sharp as possible to put all the pressure into one small area. So I don't, it, it should, it should, but I don't know. So I do need a sheath, but, uh, I, I don't know exactly what I want. I don't know what I want my sheath to fit on, to attach to. So this is, this is the machete I actually use. I need to clean it up badly. Um, I did a review on this a long time ago, the Terra Montilla. Uh, this thing is like $20 or less at Amazon, uh, on, uh, at Lowe's and it does you it does um it does everything i want it to do and it's 20 bucks it doesn't say tactical or anything like that but this is the sheath that came with it it's a nylon sheath it's nice it's clean it's simple it's nothing fancy at all but um yeah i'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down will i know what you're saying but um I'm looking for, I need a way to attach this to Molly. So I don't know if I wanted to have to get a new sheath completely or because I, I, I rigged some stuff up one time before and um, it just flapped around too much and I didn't really like it. I was kind of afraid of running with it if I took a fall, if it would come out because the, the restraint on the sheath itself is nothing but, um, a little piece of Velcro. Hello. Hubble's Cat Emergency Preparedness Lifestyle. How are you doing? <laughs> so you can do that. So how in the world could we get um, a sheath for this that would fit onto the side of my bug out bag because I want to, but I still want a belt loop on it. So whenever I get, um, uh, wherever, whenever I get to where I'm going and I want to kind of dress down, you know, I have the option of just throwing this on my belt. Yes. The Terra. Okay. So Terra Montilla is made in Brazil and Brazil is known for the design of the basic machete because they use machetes a lot in agriculture and then was starting to use them in war and became a weapon of war. So the Brazilian design machete is the machete that majority of people use and don't realize it. So the Terra Montilla is made in Brazil 
and they claim it's made to the same levels as okay so i saw that today and i have to admit i'm sorry will i didn't get a chance to see it yet i really wanted to see it but it has been a very bad day that was actually going to be i've got a few videos that came out today that i was going to watch once i got laid down and that will be the first one i watch to make sure i stay awake through it all but um in case y'all don't know what i'm doing i'm cleaning this off and all I'm doing is a little gun oil and a little makeup pad here and getting it all off of here. It's not going anywhere. Okay, <laughs> I got you. I got you. But, um, but yeah, I do want to do a little. That was kind of what I was thinking. And can y'all see? I don't know if y'all remember about how dirty it was, but it got a little bit of the, the grime off. And this thing has a decent little blade on it. If I do say so myself, if I remember correctly, let's see. Come on. Anyways, so I'm trying. Okay, so, uh, Hupples, Hooples, is it Hooples or Hupples? Give me a ooh or a. Uh. Anyways, um, this is 20 bucks. And it's at Lowe's, and you can get it every day. That's why I like this one. Um, who pulls? Who pulls? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I, we have a little restaurant around here, and it's called Mobley's, but I want to keep calling it Mobley's. And everybody laughs at me because I have the hardest time trying to figure out the, the sofa and everything else. But, yes, thank you very much. Who pulls? Thank you very much. But, um... The Terra Montilla, I've had, I've had access to one of uh, Ontario Knife product, period. Oh, really? Okay. So the Terra Montilla is 60 bucks. The Ontario is cheaper than that. I can't tell you. Um, the only Ontario Knife product I've ever held was, um, it was kind of a bayonet survival buoy looking thing and I liked it. I had nothing negative to say about it, but the Ontario machete was, it was, I, I think we've about flipped the prices. Anyways, the Terra Montilla was there and I needed it. Um, I had a bunch of brush that needed to be cleared. I had the carnivore and the carnivore was not holding up to, to what I needed it to do. So I got this and I'll tell you this little booger right here, this to Terra Montilla, it did everything I needed to do for my area. So that, that goes back to where we went back, you know, one of the earlier, earlier conversations is the best bag that I can get can be a completely useless bag where you are and vice versa. So the best uh, machete that I can get can be nearly completely useless to where you are. So it all depends on where you are and what you're chopping down. This stuff, this one right here, because of, because of it being a belly blade and what I mean by belly blade, how, how it really rolls down and comes to a sharp point. Um, this much right here is really easy to get a swing to hit in this area and if you can see from the dirt and uh, the the bark and stuff you know all my hits were, were right in this area and all the real thin real flexible stuff it was just slicing right through it but and this this could be my problem with the carnivore as well um, the type of grind but the fact that let's get it back out Let's get it back out. So, um, this, you see how this is a flat blade. Everything I was hitting, yeah, I was hitting completely flat and it was just bouncing. You know, I would hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit, bounce, hit, bounce until I started rolling the blade a little bit. So maybe it was just the type of underbrush I was hitting, the belly blade just seemed to help. Okay. Uh, well, get on a 
get on uh, the YouTube here and, and check out people's uh, opinions on the Ontario knife one. Is all I can really say for sure, 100% there. But uh, but my Terra Montilla, I can tell you, I like it. I've used it, and it will stick with me. But what I do like about this, this little knife right here comes with the Camellias, and it is a very small fixed blade knife, and it is razor sharp. I've thought about doing a little paracord wrap on it, because it is a very hot knife, just to let you know. I sold you. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it brings you as uh, much luck as it's brought me. Yeah, the small knife is like really good. And I've been trying to figure out, oh, I just thought of a great place for this knife. So I might have just, so like I did with this, with the, um, with the uh, flex seal, I might try to create me a little rubber handle on this, but I just thought of a really good spot for this knife. This would be an excellent little boot knife, and you have a little belt hook right there. A good boot knife. I said it right as it popped up. I know it's a delay, so it might not seem that way, but I promise you will. <laughs> you thought that's what I was thinking about is a good boot knife. Cause you had the little strap right here. You can get yourself a small little Velcro strap to go uh, go around your ankle, and you have yourself a boot knife. Uh huh. You ain't gonna let me get by. I, I promise you will. That's what I was thinking about. If you get yourself a little ankle strap, that would be an excellent little boot knife. And um, if you're ever doing like a micro kit, that would be a good little fixed blade knife for a micro kit. Uh, maybe as well. And so, this is my other massive budget-friendly item, but this is the, the, the next item I'm really going to upgrade. This is, um, I think, yeah, this is the Coleman Camp Axe. I've talked about this a lot. I've done a lot with this axe. It is very good. It swings good, but um, I can just tell from looking at the handle um, that I'm already getting a little surface rust. This right here, the little Coleman Campax, nah, maybe. You might want to go check yours. Mine, mine has this scratch right here. Does yours have that scratch? Okay, I didn't think so. But, um, so, this is my next thing to step up. Eastwick, I've been looking at the Eastwick. I've been looking at the marbles. Um, uh, let's see, Eastwick, I've been looking at the marbles. Um, I've been looking at some of the kind of the higher ends, and I've also been looking at the multi tools, the shovel axe combo. And I don't know how I really feel about them. Um, the one I would really like to get, to be honest with you, is um, the Zippo. Have y'all seen the Zippo axe saw combination? That is the business right there. That is the re the, the bee's knees. Um, I cannot remember the price on it, but that's kind of, that's the one I'm really looking at getting. And I think Charade has a really nice kind of, kind of compact camp axe. This one, this one chops real easy because it does have a lot of weight to it. But, um, when you're talking about carrying a machete and an axe and a fixed blade and a pocket knife, I've got a lot of weight in cutting utensils that would be cool that'd be cool will um so what so will here's a question for you mr sheath maker if i had so uh, the terra montilla is my my bug out machete my working machete my everyday machete terra montilla i always know exactly where it is because i need to know where it is if I got a camp axe, could we make a sheath that was molly compatible that the machete and the axe all mounted in together? That is the question. I that that's what I want. I want a machete axe sheath, uh, machete hatchet sheath. 
But I guess I'll have to decide on which hatchet I want before we can get the measurements and, and whatever else. So, Will, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. That is what we're doing. It's going to be epic. Uh, so, okay. That's my game plan, guys. I need somebody to sell me on a camp axe. Decide what kind of camp axe I'm getting. And a uh, hatchet, camp axe, mini little people axe. I don't know. Kids, kids, kids chopper, I guess. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, that's what we're doing, guys. I'm doing a Molly compatible strapped to the side of my bug out bag. I'm looking at my bug out bag right now. I see the blank spot where it needs to be at. Everything all in one. Um, I'll get my orientation, which way I want the edges facing, all that good stuff. Uh, special price list, wink, wink. I'll trade you some barbecue sauce and fat lighter. <laughs> Um, I don't know if y'all know about the barbecue sauce, but my dad makes barbecue sauce professionally, and his sauce is awesome. It's won a couple of competitions, so yeah, if you ever get an offer for free barbecue for me, it does you well to take it. <laughs> but um, we'll worry. Yeah, once once we know, I I know I know leather uh, costs money and everything. I ain't gonna, but uh, we'll, we'll get it all worked out and figure out how to do the uh the measurements and everything and we will definitely work something out will i appreciate the suggestion because now i'm looking at is there a fix i might i might include trying to find a way to attach that little camellia's fixed blade there too i don't know yet anyways we'll figure it out thank you thank you for the idea but yes i got to decide on camp axe hatchet whatever you call it um well, peoples, it is 12.25 here, and I've been streaming for an hour and a few minutes. I'm about to go to sleep, I hope. I got a few videos to get caught up on. Thank you all for joining me. If you're re-watching this, thank you for re-watching it. As always, if you have any questions or comments or concerns about anything I said, please post them below. I hope you all have a great night. Good night, everybody. Oh, where's this? I'm signing off. <laughs>